Well, let me just tell you, you're looking great. You know, when we first started this live streaming ministry and the cameras were set up and I was coming into your home via live streaming to Facebook, someone wrote to me and said, can you see me? Because you keep saying I'm looking great. So I dressed up only to realize you can't see me and I could come to church in my pajamas and I could be whatever, but you keep saying you're looking great. Are you seeing through the camera? I said, no, I'm not. But I am telling you, you're looking great today. And it's great to see each and every one of you coming on out. And those who have joined us for this live experience in person, I'm telling you, it's so good to see you because some of you I have not seen in person for a year. And you are looking great. I want to say that. Let's give each other a round of hand, uh, applause. Amen. Let me tell you this. Today, I want to talk to you about something I've been so passionate about. I am really passionate about your faith life. You know, I look to the ministry of a pastor as one who is just a simple coach. In fact, I got a teacher t-shirt that says coach that I wear periodically. And people say, coach, what are you coaching? Softball, football, basketball? Yeah, you know me. Uh, I would be coaching all of those things. But no, I said, I'm not any of those. I'm a spiritual coach. I'm here to help you on your spiritual journey. And most of all, I'm coaching you on your faith life, the power of your believing, which is so essential for us in this world. Because as we believe, so shall we receive. And when we understand that, let's work, let's hone the craft, let's develop the skill of our faith life, and let's do this together. Because what we talk about is faith, and that's believing. So many people ask, how do I believe? How do I believe? How do I do this faith thing? How do I pray and have the faith to really accomplish anything within my life? How do I really live out a life of dynamic faith in my life? Because you keep speaking of the great abundance that God has for us. That's right. I firmly believe in the words of Jesus. And Jesus said, I am come that you might have life abundantly. His whole message, his whole purpose of coming was to express this wonderful understanding of an abundant life. We're called to live an abundant life. Now, so many people think life here on this earth was meant to be suffering, limitation, meant to be hardships, and meant to that we go through all of these difficult times. And we're meant to live in a pious life of great poverty, and that makes us even more spiritual. But yet Jesus spoke not of poverty, but of abundance, above blessing, of goodness, of grace, and of mercy, of compassion, of love, and abundance of so many things within our life, not just the material, but well beyond the material. So you may ask, where is that abundance? How do I find this? Well, that abundance you seek must first be experienced in mind. For it to really unfold for you, the abundance that you're seeking, the blessing, the answer to your prayer that you so desire must first be experienced in your mind. That's called faith. That you're experiencing first within the mind that, that it comes in sort of this visualization. I begin to see. I begin to see the miracle that I'm looking for. I begin to see the healing. I begin to see the blessing. I begin to see it. And I begin to visualize within my heart and life. So let's just visualize with me for this moment. Would you? Let's just close our eyes and let's go to Paris. That's right. Just begin with the power of imagination that right now we're walking down the Champs-Élysées. Ooh, what do you hear? The street cars and the horns of uh, French drivers on this massive street, and it's so busy. How about are you uh, nearing the Eiffel Tower right now? And you see its majestic structure soaring into the sky. Are you maybe walking by some sidewalk cafes and you hear people speaking French? Well, what's happening right now is you're imagining. You're visualizing. And you're visualizing as if you are there. You're visualizing in mind and you're experiencing in mind as if you've gone to Paris. Well, come on back into this room. And I want to tell you that to visualize is really to imagine. And how important that spirit of imagination is to our faith. Begin to visualize the answer. Begin to imagine the answer as yours, as it being a reality. Even in the midst of all your challenges, begin to visualize and imagine that the answer is already there. Several weeks after a young man had been hired, he was called into the personnel manager's office. 
And the manager said, what's the meaning of this, young man? When you applied for the job, you told us you had five years of work experience. Now we discover this is the first job you've ever had. Well, young man, what's your answer? And he said, well, I'll tell you this. Your ad said that you wanted someone with imagination. So here I am. I imagine I'd been working for five years. Okay? Well, let me tell you this. That spirit of imagination is what's crucial to your faith life. That you begin to claim, you begin to believe, you begin to visualize, you begin to see it as it is desired within your heart and your life. Because faith requires this power of visualization and of imagination within our mind. For that true imagination or true visualization would be that you see yourself already healed. You see yourself already blessed. You see yourself already prosperous. You see yourself already loved. Whatever it may be that you're desiring. Maybe you're seeking a new job and you see yourself already employed. Maybe you're seeking yourself, you're seeking someone to come into your life and you see yourself already in that relationship. Whatever it may be, the power of visualization is crucial and is a key component to our faith life. Become the actor, shall we say, in the role, playing the part of being and doing whatever it is you so desire from the inside out. Visualization is that living as if. Living as if. You see, so many of the stories within Scripture have been teaching us, and we've kind of overlooked this concept. We haven't, we've thought, oh, I've got to believe, but, you know, I'm waiting, I'm anticipating, I don't know if it's ever going to happen for me. But when we ignite the power of faith to its fullest extent, there's visualization and imagination that says, I'm already claiming. I am healed. I'm walking in faith. I'm walking in faith that all things are at work right here and now in this very moment within my life. Because the dynamic of faith is this. It's an inside job. That's right. It's an inside job. Faith begins inside our life with the power of believing. When we begin to say, this I know to be true, we're not just throwing out a casual phrase. We're claiming, I know this to be true from the inside out. From the inside, I believe in my mind, in my thoughts, in my consciousness. I'm experiencing that which I so desire in mind first. How crucial that is within our lives. People often don't understand that everything begins within. Everything begins within us. Every idea, every expression, everything that you see around us began in someone's mind. The creation of this building, the architectural design, the creation of all these chairs and fixtures, this piano, the drums, etc., all were a concept in mind. So it is the answer to your prayer. It begins. In your mind, you begin there to visualize, to plant the seed of great faith in your life. Now, Jesus, when he was called upon to come to uh, the, his good friend Lazarus' home, and Lazarus was sick, Jesus had been delayed, and he arrived later on. When he arrived, Lazarus was already dead, and they buried him and put him in the tomb. You would think it was way too late for those gathered around said, Jesus, don't even bother. Had you been here earlier, it would have been a different thing. But now it's too late. Lazarus is dead. He's in the tomb. Here's the beautiful thing about this story. Something that we often overlook. When Jesus lifted up his eyes unto heaven, he said, thank you, Father, that you've heard me. What? You've heard what? What? What did Jesus say? You see, he's already visualized already held in mind, the healing of Lazarus. Wait a minute, this impossibility? Lazarus is dead. He's buried in a tomb. And yet Jesus is visualizing something different. Jesus is speaking something different, saying, thank you, Father, that you've already heard me. I've already claimed it. I already claimed the resurrection power within Lazarus' body. Now, Jesus being our great teacher and our great example, this story is then for each and every one of us that we begin to say, thank you, Father, that you've already heard me. Wait a minute, heard what? That prayer of faith that says, I'm claiming my healing, and my healing is now. I'm claiming my blessing, and that blessing is now. I'm claiming my abundance, 
and that abundance is now. I'm claiming my prosperity, and that prosperity is now. Because I already see it done for the gratitude that's being expressed. is saying, I see it done. I'm already thanking God. I'm already thanking that it's finished. I'm thanking that it's already accomplished. I'm not worrying about when and how and all those kind of things. I'm already into the gratitude moment of saying, thank you, thank you, thank you, that you've already heard me. And it's already being expressed. Because this all-embracing statement was so filled with revelation that it burst open the shell of a thousand limitations. That's right. All the limitations of our world, of any kind of tombstone, of any kind of tomb that may hold back that resurrection power, it's been burst. Burst open. thank you with gratitude god thank you father thank you that it's already accomplished and that which began and is experienced within jesus now is manifested without it's coming to be a reality in our world how beautiful it is for jesus understood i and the father are one you know that jesus said that over and over again i and the father are one a sense of oneness that the divine power and presence of God dwells in me. There is no separation. But we're one. We're one. And then we understand this, this wonderful union, this wonderful connection of oneness that we're living, that the divine power is in me, working through me. It's around me, and it's always for me. Well, that's when faith ignites and miracles begin to happen within our lives. The key is that at no time, did Jesus ever consider, weigh, handle out the evidence of the standard of this physical realm? In other words, Jesus wasn't thinking, wait a minute, physically this is impossible. When Jesus went to feed the 5,000 and was given just loaves and fishes, he didn't look at that basket and say, this is crazy, this ain't going to work. Physical limitations would say, there ain't enough in this basket to feed 5,000 women, and not counting women and children. 5,000 men. Then let's add the women and children. Let's, whoa, 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 whoa. It, you see, Jesus never once thought about the physical limitations. Why do we? Why do we? Why do we constantly focus on the physical limitations of saying, this isn't possible. We can't do this. This won't work out. I'm, I, I, I can't step out in faith. It's just not going to work. But you see, every story of faith moves beyond the physical. Peter, getting out of the boat to walk on water, we know that that's not physically possible unless some of you are walking on water. Anyone here want to raise their hand and say, I've walked on water. Uh huh. Yeah, right. I don't see any hands going up. How about you out there in live streaming and YouTube channel? Any one of you walked on water? No. So what we look at is a story of someone moving beyond the aspects of the physical to address a life of living from the spiritual. It says, I don't look at limitations. Don't talk to me about limitations. Don't talk about me, to me about impossibilities. Don't talk to me about all the ways that this can't happen. Oh, I'm going to tell you this, and I've told you this story over and over again, but we have to continue to remind it. In my 20-some years of ministry here at City of Light, I don't know how many treasurers have told me, we're not going to make it. I can remember my first six months of ministry here. Treasurer took me aside and says, we only have about six months that we're going to exist. And after that, we're going bankrupt, and this church will exist no more. And what are we? 21 years later, standing in a beautiful facility, blessed of God in so many different ways. You see, when we begin to look at the limitations of our physical world, and those things guide us, and those things make our decisions, and we're based on all those things. We're just living in the world of limit. Limit. But we're called by faith to move beyond limitations and to begin to see, visualize, begin to imagine the possibilities within our life. 
Jesus said, judge not by appearances. Judge not by the physical. Don't you ever go to prayer based on the issues of the physical and say, oh, God, it looks impossible. Oh, God, I'm not thinking this is going to work out. Oh, God, all the circumstances around me say, this is not going to manifest for my life. But we judge not by appearance. Disregarding all of that, he would ask of the Father, and it would be manifested. It would be brought forth. For the fastest way to manifest results with is to begin to visualize within the answer is already there. And let me tell you this. It's even better when you put the answer in your prayer. Put the answer in your prayer. So when you're praying, already include the answer in your prayer. That's speaking the word of faith that says, I believe it to be so. So when you're speaking the word and you're praying, you're already including the answer that says, thank you, God, I'm healed. And that's your prayer. Not, oh, God, I'm not sure I could be healed. The doctor says it's not possible. I don't think it's ever going to happen for me. What's the answer to your prayer? You ain't going to be healed because you just claimed, I don't know if it's ever going to happen for me. But when we begin to speak the answer in our prayers, when we begin to say, I so believe and I claim now and I know this to be true and I'm healed, I have this job, I'm gainfully employed, I am blessed, I am successful, I'm abundant. When we begin to speak from that, we're speaking words of faith. We're putting faith into action and we're beginning to visualize with our mind exactly what is necessary to unfold within our life, what we desire. For that visualization, it says, wait a minute, get this, get this. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The substance, the substance, what makes up. And that faith that's visualized, the visualization work that you're doing of imagining and claiming it so is the substance that now goes to work to manifest, to bring about that which you so desire in your life. Now, it has to be a faith that is expressed unwavering, you know? Can't be that, you know, you know. I was talking with someone who was looking for a partner in their life. And I said, you know, it would be nice someday. Well, that's not faith. Someday, someday never comes. And you wonder why you don't have the partner, because you keep saying, well, it would be nice, meaning eh, I'm not so sure. It might be okay someday. But how about I'm believing that someone is coming to my life right here and now, and I'm claiming it, and I'm getting ready. So I've cleared up my closet, so I've got some space for my new partner. How about it, did you're saying, I'm looking for someone in my life to come and happen, and I'm I'm preparing in such a way that I'm accommodating that they're moving in. You see, that's the faith that manifests for you within your life. Now, Proverbs chapter 29, verse 18 says, where there is no vision, Where there is no visualization, where there's no imagination, where you've not held a vision in mind, people perish. Where there's no vision, people perish. Where there's no sense of visualizing or imagination, a faith that is ignited with this sense of, I see the answer, I claim the answer, I'm living as if the answer is mine already. What happens is people perish. It doesn't mean that we die. With that... (laughs) principle is saying um, that what we begin to do is we sort of give off a restraint. Uh, we, We abandon all kinds of restraint, and we now make poor decisions. We're not thinking rightly. We don't have any vision. We founder. We spiral downward into stress and doubt and fear and question and lack that we feel like we have nothing. When we don't visualize, when we don't see that it's there for us, For that word perish means that we slowly die. We give off, we surrender to these limitations. That's what we're doing. We're just surrendering. Because you didn't visualize. You didn't see it possible. You don't claim it and step out in faith and get out of the boat and start walking on water. Instead, you say, oh, I can't walk on water. That's going to happen. Let go of those limitations. Judge not any experience that you're going through by the appearance of it whatsoever. Now it says in that passage as well, but he that keepeth the law is happy. He that understands these spiritual principles, which are laws, or shall we say the promises of God, if you keep those promises of God and you begin to work those promises of God, 
You're going to be happy. Abundance will be yours. Because what are those promises of God? As a man thinks, so he is. Now, if you think, visualize, and imagine you're healed, that healing is yours. I can't tell you how many experiences I've had when people begin to ignite this kind of faith and begin to work it and say, yes, I'm experiencing this healing, and you know what? Healing is unfolding for them. It's theirs. I've experienced it personally. Now, for those who, as a man, think, think, I'm sick, I'm in limitation, I'm growing old. Oh, and you know when you get old, there's aches, oh, pains, oh, there's stress, there's limitations. I can't, I can't, because why I'm getting old. As a man thinks, so you are. And honey, you are old. I'm going to say that. You're just old because you know what? You think you're old and you believe you're old and your visualization is just that. And so that's what's manifesting within you. But how about we begin to shift that and change and we work the law. We work these promises. We work these principles and we begin to claim them because there are spiritual laws we need to put in action. We need to know that what we sow, we reap. What we sow in thought and mind. What we sow in faith. What we sow in our visualizations. We're going to reap. These are spiritual laws. What happens is when there's no vision, people see, uh, are limited and they only see the physical. They see uh, the material. And we're called to look beyond. Look beyond. Look past that. Look in a heavenly gaze. Jesus lifted his eyes toward heaven. Heaven being that higher consciousness, that clarity of thinking, that sense of the divine, that sense of knowing the very presence of God. I lift up my eyes and my vision, my sight, what I'm looking at is not this limitation. I'm looking at the possibilities, infinite possibilities of God. And that's how the miraculous unfolds for our lives. Now, I can do all the preaching about the glories of heaven, but I'm not going to reach a single person whose mind has no capacity for the enjoyment of heaven, for the enjoyment of the goodness of God, for the enjoyment of blessings, for the enjoyment of the abundance of God. Because if your mind is full of, God ain't going to ever bless me. This ain't going to happen for me. It happens for you, but it won't happen for me. If you've got that kind of mind, I can talk till I'm blue in the face. But you have to first begin to say, I am well ready to experience first and foremost in my mind God's blessing, God's work, God's goodness. Now, some of us have trouble visualizing. I've met lots of people who are not very visual, you know? I just can't see it. I'm having a hard time visualizing. So let me offer another component for you. How about you begin to feel it? You can't see it in your mind. Begin to feel it. Begin to feel the goal that you've desired. Begin to feel it. Some of you have vision boards, and you've done vision boards to help describe that vision and put some pictures before you of that what you're believing for. And, but, you know, let's add to it something more dynamic, and that's the feeling then. If you're having trouble visualizing? Start feeling. Feeling the presence of God in you, through you, at work for you, providing for you, blessing for you. Begin to let go of the sense of needing, you know? Because what happens is you're needing, you're wanting something, and you're simply saying, I don't have it. Faith says, I already have it. Wanting and needing something says, I don't have it. How many of you are familiar with the 23rd Psalm? What does it say? The Lord is my shepherd. I desperately need. No, no, it doesn't say that. Does it? The Lord is my shepherd. I want, I want, I want, I want, I want, because I don't have. No. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. I don't have any want. I don't have any need. Why? Because the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord has already provided. You see, that's that visualization. That's that feeling that we're talking about. The psalmist was writing exactly what we need to engage in our life. And that is, I feel it. I visualize it. I see it. I know it's mine, and I claim it as mine. See, that's the power of faith at work with such great strength within our lives. When we want something, what is the message that we're giving to this subconscious mind, to our deeper mind, you know, of our spirit and soul? And what, what message are we sending out to the universe? We're simply saying, I don't have it. And we're saying then, since I don't have it, I may never have it. But faith says, 
you do. Because God knows the desires of your heart before you even ask. Before. 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 It's already there. It's already created. It's already ready for you. But you need the faith that steps out and says, I claim it. It's mine. I got it. Exactly what I've been praying for is mine. That which I believe for. See, when you get so excited about this, because I'm passionate and I want you to feel the power and presence of God that works so dynamically for you and provides for you in so many beautiful ways. Now, what we're thinking about, it's going to determine our future. If you're thinking constantly about what you can't have, what you don't have, what you want, what you need, it determines your future. And your future will be one of lack. It'll be one that continually exists with, I need, I don't have, it's not possible. You know, Dr. Joseph Murphy, one of our great authors that we've been studying in our programs through the Emerson Institute, said this, we don't attract what we want, we attract what we are. You don't get what you want, you get what you are. And what you are is meant to be this person that says, I live as if I am whole. That's what I am. That's who I am. You know yourself as blessed, abundant, gifted, loved, complete, and whole. That's who you are. And when you know that and you live from that, that's what you will attract and that's what will come to you. That's faith. That's faith at work. It happens when you are embracing this in your heart and your life. James chapter 1, verse 17 says, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. It's coming down from this wonderful higher consciousness of knowing this wonderful place. And it comes down from the Father, this divine source. It comes to us. And if you want to feel the joy, you want to feel the answer, then I invite you to just welcome this joy in your life of an answered prayer. Feel it. What does it feel like to have your prayer answered? What does that feel like? Well, it feels joyous, doesn't it? It feels amazing. You know? You've been praying for a job, and what does it feel like when you got the job? Woo! It feels really good, doesn't it? You've been praying for a miracle in your life, and what does it feel like to get that miracle? It feels amazing. So begin right there with the feeling of the answered prayer already there first, because it happens because you created it by faith in consciousness, in your thinking, in your thoughts. That's how faith is work. That's how it's explained to us, and we understand it through the Scriptures and the ancient teaching. That's what Jesus was trying to get across to us, that what we appears in our world first appeared in our thought, in our consciousness, in our mind. We've experienced it first. And so what I'm encouraging you to do even every day of this week ahead and the days ahead is this. Don't want it. Don't want anything. Instead, be it. Instead, experience it. Don't want it. Don't live in echoing that lack and need. But live from the perspective I have. I already own it. I already possess it. It's mine. The divine power and presence is already there. It's already flowing in and through me, and I am living from that. And I say, Father, thank you that you've heard my prayer. I speak that. Jesus as he, our great teacher, spoke to us and by an example. We now claim that, and we do the very same. We're following in the footsteps of Jesus. You're a follower of Jesus, right? Well, it's about time we follow his teaching and the examples he's given to us and begin to live it. So the answer to your prayer is within you. It's within you. And it begins to unfold as you experience it in mind. Amen.